Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and I did not expect to be doing this. Welcome to Console 6. This is the newest version of my software that essentially replaces the mix bus. And it came about in an interesting way. So a fellow on the forum gear slots came and said, oh, hey, I've been doing this thing in, uh, I think, GLSL shaders or something like that. And it would probably work as a console pairing of an encode and decode uh, interested. And I was like, well, I'll try it. As it happens, I tried it and it's interesting what it did. So let me start playing audio for you before I talk more and explain about what this is. Here is a sort of cheesy attitude choir, which is my console test, 20 tracks of voices with no uh, console at all. A little bit loud, but I want you to be able to hear this stuff. And I will show you console bus. Note that in Logic, I have these all selected, so it'll turn them all on when I hit it. And console bus is kind of like this. That, of course, is console 5. That is the previous one that I had. One thing people have been concerned about a little bit is they feel sometimes that it is too hard to hear what console is doing. And there's also another complaint, which is that you have to gain stage stuff up really loud in order to be able to hear what console is doing. And again, if we play this, this is console 5. This is the one that uses a sign in an arc sign function. Uh, you'll hear that it's not wildly different from the raw signal. Here's what we have with console six. After I turn the other one off, here we go. Also note that this is gain staged down a bit for reasons I'm about to tell you. I mentioned that that was gain staged down, so we can boost it with this little purest gain here, and this is sort of comparable to how loud it was before. Here's what's happening. The new version of console, console 6, is still a um, encode-decode pair. In fact, it resembles console, uh, purest console 5 in that it is a simple encode-decode pair that uh, doesn't do weird stuff to cause DC offset or anything like that. But it's using a different algorithm. It's using an algorithm that will make a stronger effect, basically. So what happens is if we have the same level of uh, mixed gain staging going into console six with a large elaborate mix with a lot of stuff going on, it's going to start to audibly distort sooner. The other way you can look at this is this is the version of console where you don't have to peak all the way up to the top. In fact, you probably don't want to. And that produces certain effects. Like if you normally want to gain stage stuff so that your peaks don't go all the way up to zero, that you leave headroom, and this is laudable. It's, good. it's a good idea to do that. Console 6 might be the one for you because at the point that the effect starts to make a sort of audible crackling and stuff going on, driving the uh, mix harder than you would necessarily want. Um, that's probably around the point where you would kind of lay off and stop pushing it to be louder. Another interesting sidelight is this. Like we can do uh, console six like that. Uh. 
and you can hear a certain kind of crackliness to it. The uh, console effect is much stronger than it is with console 5. Oh, by the way, it's also lower CPU, I think, because it is doing a power function rather than the sine function. It's hard to tell. It's possible that the sine function on some computers will be more efficient depending upon where it's being calculated. But anyway, because this is a console effect, if you have something on a single track that needs to have full dynamic range and go all the way to zero um, without any distortion whatsoever, that will always happen with any individual track because as it is a encode decode pair, if you only have the one track and it's going through one incarnation of console, for instance, uh, here's something that I can do. I've got it turned on and I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about by soloing this one track, which is a fairly loud track, but, and uh, a bad voice. If I was to turn console off, pretty much exactly the same. And that's because the console system doesn't actually alter individual tracks. It alters the way they combine. They combine in such a way that um, they're pushing the uh, transfer function of each individual track away from what it would be if it was all by itself. And then the decode reacts differently. To the, it's, console has always worked that way. This is the reason that it's not just your usual like convolution kernel sound model just by doing an EQ curve or something. There's no EQ in here at all. Instead, it is doing this encode-decode thing. And the reaction is, as I've said, oh, excuse me while I select all of the tracks again. I was going to quickly do an AB there. You'll have the raw signal. And then, actually, I'll even do this on the fly, because why not? While I'm doing this video, it might be a little bit loud, we'll see. I believe one of the things about console 6 compared to console 5 is that the channel plugin boosts loudness more than console 5 did. And then the uh, bus plugin cuts loudness more than console 5 did. So I should be able to cut these both in, selecting them each rapidly, and you'll hear what happens without. I think that worked out pretty good. So I must thank the uh, Gearsludge poster Tor Gristle and be grateful for the explorations in uh, GLSL shaders that gave rise to this. Tor Gristle has allowed me to credit him or her, or it, because Gristle is an object. Uh, it's a part of food, actually. Let's let's not think too hard about that. But Tor Gristle said I could use that algorithm as part of open source code, so this is now MIT licensed, so other people can use it as well. And because it kicks in faster and distorts easier, that means when I start doing my combination of console with bus colors and such, which is something I'm still working on. I have a pile of plugins coming out through June, even without getting into that. But when I get into that, that means I can start tailoring the way that the bus engages with the modeling by gain staging it up and down. So basically this just made my future uh, more emulating console variations all the better. And that's one of the nice things about something like open source is that if you're working with people who will share their ideas, amazing stuff can happen 
when you figure out like, hey, this person did something really smart, let me run with that. And then you might be able to do something that they wouldn't have done and so on and so forth. It's kind of like scientific discovery in a way or the way that scientific discovery can be. Now, the reason I'm able to keep working on all this kind of stuff is because I'm supported by Patreon. So I won't beat that into the ground. It's doing pretty well, honestly. If I get to $1,500 a month, I'll start doing another live stream, and that's going to be on Wednesday, in which I analyze classic record albums and tell you how they were made and the kinds of uh, techniques going into them to the best of my knowledge and ability. And I've spent a lot of time learning about this kind of stuff because it fascinates me. Plus, I know a bunch of hotshot, uh, big deal type people. Not that they spend all their time sitting around telling tales out of school, but um, over the years, I've learned interesting stuff. And that's something they'll be able to share on Wednesdays. So if we do get up to that point, that's going to start happening. Uh, until then, this is how I make my living. So if you would use console five, console six, sorry, we're already going to use console five for things. Um, if you would use console six and be like, I would have bought that for $50 for a perpetual license with support and getting the source code. I know it's very stingy of me, I'm sure. Um, if you would have bought that for fifty baller, dollars, ballers. If you would have bought that for fifty bollards, then please jump on my Patreon for uh, an additional fifty dollars a year if you can. If you can't, please accept it as my gift to helping your musical environment continue, and I will continue developing my musical environment and developing this kind of technology as well as I can which is pretty much all I could ask, honestly. It's nice to be able to do this, and it's extra nice. Well, it's extra nice when I can bring something that's potentially this cool for people to play with, because I know people were concerned about having to mix hot in order to use console properly. But it's also really nice when it wasn't all my idea. It was just this other fellow who showed up with some algorithms and said, oh, hey, why don't you try these? And so I did, and I got the permission to put it out as MIT uh, licensed open source. The uh, shout out to Tora Gristle is in the actual code, so anytime I copy it, I'll be including that. And if you copy the code and use it in your own work, you should copy that bit too, as well as shouting out Air Windows for your work. It's all sound, it's all rather complicated, but it's very rewarding, and I really hope that you enjoy console, namely console six. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.